Greetings, bike guys and bike gals. I'm showing you some of the details on my 2020 EN300 TM racing. And I wanted to walk you through and show you what I've done to my bike, how I set it up, and give you a review on, on uh, the longevity. So I've got about 100 hours on this bike. And I wanted to show you how I set my bike up, which was a little bit different than they come from the factory. So we added the uh, the GPR um, steering stabilizer, which comes with this bracket and this stem, and then it comes with these clamps and, and that to set it up so that it runs sub-bar. I ended up with the stock bars. I don't like the extra height. This is just my own personal preference, but I'm showing you what I did to my bike just to give you some ideas. And then the handlebars here, this is a low bend Nikon bar that we ended up adding in here so that I could get back to the right, the same handlebar height. I'm six foot tall and I don't like the tall or the, the risers on there. It puts my hands and elbows up too high so I don't have as much control. This is the reason that I run it this way. And so that's one of the first things that we did to the bike. And then I want to show you also, um, I've recently just set it up for a dual sport ride. We have a big dual sport ride coming up this weekend, and I needed to dual sport it to do that. Now in Nevada, we get away with some things. So I've added turn signals. They come with this taillight system, and I put a dealer plate on it. And then we've also added to the front some turn signals up here. And this is a plug and play type of a thing. It's already pre-wired for the turn signals and all that sort of thing. I didn't add the horn and I didn't put mirrors on it. I may end up adding a mirror before I go. And then we also made a couple other changes. I changed to the front fender here. Rather than the factory blue, this is a factory replacement fender. It's in the white. I just thought it'd make for kind of more of a striking look of the bike. And I wanted to show you a couple other items that I've added. I've added that the skid plate is um, a Cross Pro all aluminum skid plate. And the reason that I went this direction, so you can see, see where the linkage is back here. A lot of guys like the bigger skid plates, um, the plastic ones, that come APX is a is a good brand, and they make a flap that comes clear down over the over the linkage back here. But I'm not a linkage jammer, so I would rather have the additional clearance. Same thing with the skid plate. I like the smaller, tighter to the frame deal because I, I want the clearance that's there, and then I don't I purposely don't run it over stuff and run it into things. We've added also in here in the back. Uh, some protection for the rear disc because um, that shark fin makes a huge difference in saving your, your disc. You are going to catch rocks and things with this rear wheel as you pass by them, and that just makes that protection. I really like that setup there. Yep, we also added a fish. Um, this, this piece slides into the end of the muffler, and then it makes a spark arrestor. It's a spark arrestor system. They have two different versions of this. Um, you can go to either to our website or the FISH website and you'll be able to see the different ones that they have available. Um, they have a large cone one which is uh, US Forestry approved. I'm running the other one, the cone type, in here. It has a larger mesh in it and it just allows the bike to breathe a little bit better. Now, it's not real clean right now, but I've added height to the seat here because I'm, like I said, I'm six foot tall and I needed a little more leg room. And then we changed the, the seat cover on it. And that's just for my own comfort. I like this rib design on here because it kind of holds you in place when you're climbing a steep hill or something. You don't slide down the seat. These are a replacement lever 
uh, that move cells are through uh, Parts Unlimited, and they'll they'll flex back if you tip over that direction, and they're, you know, they're they're really high quality units. I really like them, and then they also come in the cool looking blue. Um, but these have worked out really well. Now I have guys ask me on the bikes, how are the parts availability for the TM? And my question to them is, how many parts are you planning on replacing? Because these bikes are really tough, really well made. Like this one's got 100 hours on it. And I put in a new piston at 97.7 hours. I put a new piston and rings and a top end bearing. Of course, new gaskets and that and put it back together. The motor fired right up, runs nice and smooth, just like it should. And I think that's just kind of a maintenance type of a thing. We have, there's a lot of other things that are available on these bikes, but I'm just showing you what I did to my bike. Now down here below that are pivot pegs. The pivot pegs are a very large platform and they rock this way and that way. Hence the name pivot pegs. Now for me, they work really well because I keep my foot nice and planted. I can still shift without moving my foot all over the place. And it, and it works really well. And when you lean back, like going through a ditch or some uh, whoop de doos or something, that peg stays connected to your boot. And the same thing on a downhill descent or something, and you roll your boot forward, you keep uh, all sides connection on it. So I like the pivot pegs. We sell those here in the shop. And then, um, let's see, what else did I add? Oh, we added some radiator braces that are in here. They mount off of the frame, and there's a video on there when we installed them on, on Bike Guys, if you want to check it out. And it's a triangulated frame here with crossbars that run across the front, and they keep that radiator protected from side falls and things like that. And I put those on when the bike was new, and so we haven't had any problem with the radiators. They stay nice and straight. They don't get that um, parallelogram thing going where they're out of shape and that sort of thing it holds them right where they're supposed to be. One other upgrade that I have coming, um, this is the HGS uh, expansion chamber. It works really well. It's a nice quality unit, but I've got some dents in it and that sort of thing, and we're going to be taking the dents out of it. I use a a hydraulic system that fills the bike with uh, water and we're able to push the dents and stuff out. But we're working on that right now. It needed some modifications before I could do that. But this is the electronic power valve on here. And we've made no changes to that because it's set up and works really well, just the way that TM had designed it. This bike also has the three gallon fuel tank on it which gives us good capacity so it can have good range. And you can see that dude comes way down here. It fills in in between the entire frame up here, and then, it, and then the top isn't sticking all up high like some of the desert tanks and stuff like that. Um, let's see, what else did I do on this bike? I'm so used to it that I forget what I put on it. Um, I run these, um, these pillow top uh, grips on there, safety wired, and this is a Torque One brand, but I like this type because it gives you plenty of grip, pushing or pulling or whatever like that. They're not oversized, and these are worn a bit. You know, they've been on here for quite a few rides already. So for this uh, dual sport ride, we're going to end up doing some gravel roads and some two-track trails and stuff like that. So I geared the back end up by adding a 46-tooth countershaft sprocket. This is the one that we sell through uh, TM, the, uh, what's it, the Ziff spring, uh, sprockets. It's steel on the outside, aluminum on the inside. We are uh, Dirt Trick sponsored racers and we end up running dirt tricks on all our bikes but they didn't have one in that 46 tooth size so i'm going to just run that one for this ride that we have coming up we're going to 
do about 450 miles over three days. So I needed to have a little taller gearing for going down roads and maybe some top speeds and things like that. But there's a lot of different sprockets available. Again, our preference is the Dirt tr Tricks uh, stainless steel. And we can get a picture of that. Mm -hmm. um, and th those are really nice sprockets. I haven't run this particular sprocket yet, so I'll give you a report on that at a later date. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of what we do here in the shop. We appreciate you guys watching our videos and enjoying the content that we try to put together. Uh, we try to do it every week. But if you will subscribe and hit the like button and, and uh, send us a comment, we appreciate all the feedback that we get and it also help us out, helps us out with our YouTube channel. So stick around and keep an eye out for more.